Well, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray God is dealing with you well today, as he always does with his beloved. And remember, if you're being chastised, it's only because you're his beloved. So if things are, are happening that way, he's trying to straighten you out before it's too late. If you've led astray, come back, because he is coming soon. Sooner than we all think, sooner than we understand, none of us understand time the way God understands time. Because he made it. He doesn't live in time, but he made it for us. It's hard to imagine that there is a place where there is no time, where eternity exists, and there is no time in eternity. I mean, this is beyond our comprehension, but we'll soon be in it. We'll soon understand what he means, and isn't this glorious to know? Now, the new year is about to start. The new year, Nisan 1, which is when God declared a new year. Not when the Roman emperor declared a new year for their worshipping purposes, but when God said the new year was when throughout history, cultures throughout history that had come out from Noah's Ark had a new year. So we have to look at God's calendar, not at man's calendar. And this year things are lining up. Not the naming of the new year, but the holiest season in history is lining up. Nisan 1, which is the beginning of the first month of the, first of the year, is coming up very, very soon. It's coming up on the 23rd of this month. Now it's the 18th today, so 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, five days time. Oh, chubby little hand, sorry. <laughs> five days time is the start of Nisan 1, the new year starts in five days. Now this is so important on a prophetic basis because this is a lining for the first time, I don't know of another time, but the first time I can find where not only the Hebrews have their first month of Nisan, but the Muslims are having their month of Ramadan. And they have, the Muslims have already declared that if they see any activity that they are not happy with during this period of Ramadan, anything happening near or on the Temple Mount region, they will attack. I know this smile sound looks terrible, but it's it's not meant to be I'm excited about that happening, but it's the culmination of timings that is exciting me. I, I apologise to anyone that thinks I'm excited at the prospect of a war. No, that's not what that's not what's exciting me. It's the prophetic nature of this coming together. Because it doesn't just end there. Because also in this same period of time, in this same month, and almost at the same intervals of time, Passover, Ramadan and Easter collide. And for the, the Islamic people to declare if there's any activity around that region, <laughs> when they're having their Ramadan, they're going to go to war. And the Christians are on the move, or will be. The Israelites are on the move, or will be. All at the same time. And everyone's going to be on tenderhooks. It's going to be 
a very estranged type of an attitude. But this is all happening this year. Ramadan starts on the 23rd of March this year. Nisan starts on the 23rd of March this year. The lambs were birthed on the 1st of Nisan. The lambs were taken, they were tested. They were taken into the homes for four days before Passover and they were sacrificed on Passover, which this year is the 5th of April. That is the date, if our calendars are aligned with biblical truth, the 5th of April this year should be the crucifixion day of Jesus, our Christ. And if he died on that date, then he was in the he was buried and lay in the grave for three days and three nights. That means that on the ninth of April he would be coming from that grave. The ninth of April is the first day of the week, Sunday. On that day, the Catholic Church and all of the the current Protestant churches in Israel are culminating their ceremonies on that date. They are having festivities and services for a full week before from what they're declaring is Palm Sunday right through to Easter um, Sunday. But now in Jesus Christ, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ just came up on my screen. Oh, he's always with us. We, he is bringing us nigh. You see that he is coming for us. We are being brought nigh to him, close to him. Soon, nigh is soon, close. So even even in this, he's, he's giving us messages but you see, all of these things are coming together. And there is a there is a threat of violence. Remember what it said in the Bible when they say peace and safety, sudden violence shall come upon them. It is very possible this is the sign of sudden violence coming upon them. I'm not saying it's the one, but it's very possible that there will be violence on this time. Are we going on the 23rd at the end of this year? Or are we coming through into the next? Because remember what happened. This is something a lot of people have forgotten, I think. There was already the first resurrection. We are all part of the first resurrection if we go in Christ. But the first fruits went on first fruits. The day that Jesus rose, his resurrection, when he died, it said that the earth shook and the graves opened. Now, everyone's saying, well, the graves opened, everyone came out then. That's not what the Bible says. It says on that day, the earth shook and the graves opened. So they were seeing open graves. That would have been terrifying to them. They were seeing the dead. But it said then, when Jesus resurrected, when Jesus rose, they came out of their graves. So it is exceedingly possible that that will be, he said, everything that happened then was a foreshadow of what shall come. Could it be, and I'm only saying, could it be that we do not go at the end of the year, but at the first resurrection after the end of the year? That's something to think about because it happened before. 
could it happen again that there is a shaking, a major earthquake, a major upset before and then on resurrection day? Is it possible that that's when they come out of their graves? And what happens when they come out of their graves, when the dead in Christ rise first? Then we that are left, we that are left, meet them. Change, no longer fat little old lady, grey hair, this is all gone I, I I become young you become young we become eternal bodies and we will never have an arthritic ache we will never have a kidney fail we will never have a heart pain we we will have our full faculties beyond anything you can imagine you and I will not forget anything except the evil. All evil will be done away with and we will only know good. Isn't that wonderful? We are saved from that first thing that Adam and Eve did. They took, they ate, and then they knew. Now the, the word knew is the same word we, we know when a marriage happens and a husband and wife know each other. They unite. That's what happened. They united with good and evil. Until then, there was no evil in them. But it came into them just as the uniting of a husband and a wife. Now, when we go to heaven, we are born again out of this body into our new body. And the new body is clean because it's the garment that our Father gives us. And it's a clean body. And it has no sin. It has no communion with sin. It has no communion with death. Our new body did not know sin. And so it has none of the wages of sin. And we will be perfect because we will be just like our Lord. Isn't that exceedingly exciting to know it could be so soon? It could be the end of the year. It could be on Resurrection Day. But as others have said, it could be another time. But I get excited knowing and watching what's going on around us and seeing how it could be. I find that exciting to know what could be is, is coming up. And why does it make sense? Why does this could be make sense? And this is how it makes sense. So I'm excited. I hope you are. I hope you have your boarding pass ready. Because even if it's not now, even if we've got to wait a little while, but there's a delay on the clock, it's not a delay according to God. It's just a delay in our understanding. But we want to be ready to board as soon as we hear the trumpet. It's coming soon. Remember Jesus said to on the door, time for rapture, prepare the bride. So this is the time we have to prepare. So don't stop preparing. Don't stop praying for your loved ones because Jesus is working miracles. He is bringing people to faith all around the world. Muslims by the thousands are coming to Christ. They know something is happening. He is calling them. We are the called ones. We are not the chosen people. There are some religions that teach you you are the chosen people. We are not chosen. Israel is the chosen people. We are the called. He is calling us out of many nations. And some are Israelis. 
but we are the called. The bride was called. Remember also, Jacob had two wives. The first one was the one he wanted, he chose Rachel. And he worked for Rachel, just as Jesus worked for Israel. He chose Israel and worked for Israel, but then in the end, he wasn't given Israel. That was the one he chose. But then Leah was told to go to him. She was called out. She was told to go to him that night. And he was given Leah. Not the one he chose, but the one that was sent. He married Leah. Jesus the chosen people are Israel. He doesn't get them first. He gets Leah, the ones that were called. And then in the end, but he marries her. She is the bride. And she is fruitful and she loves her husband. And he loves her too. Leah is the bride, is the wife that, when he died, was with him. He was buried with Leah. He was not buried with Rachel or Rebecca. I get those two mixed up. But he wasn't buried with her. He didn't have his bones buried with his chosen. His bones stayed with his first bride that called out. Remember that. Remember that. Israel must be married too because Israel's husband died so that she can remarry. That's the last one. She is the chosen. You and I are the called. And he is calling us all. He's calling us all from all over the world. Out of every church, out of every nation out of every religion hindus are coming muslims are coming even satan worshippers have come across they are being drawn out but those that turn their back on him even though they were called and given the opportunity they will not join the flock so run to the shepherd the shepherd is about to take his flock, the flock that heard his voice and came. Remember, mine will hear my voice and know me. So those that are coming to him, he is about to take us to the sheepfold for safety. Get ready to leave. Also, if you're wondering about the earthquakes and what's this all about, let me tell you, if you look at a map of the earthquakes in those apps that you see, it's a flat sheet. It's, it's hard to form an understanding fully. I get apps that give me all of these um, updates of earthquakes and I have a quick look and wow, yes, look at that, look at that. They're all over the world. On the flat map, they don't make a lot of sense. But if you find an app, not an app, a um, channel, I can't remember his name, but it's something like Dutch Incense. D-U-T-C-H Incense, I think it is. And this is a man who's showing you the earthquakes, the seismic um, things going on. He has an actual globe image which shows you all of these quake lines around the world. It is around the world. And you can see the distinctions of where they're going. And when you see it as the globe, my darlings, you can see what God is doing. It is really shaking all of the landforms. 
It is really shaking the earth. It's doing what he said. In the end days, he's going to shake the earth. And there'll be a big one. But you can see how they're all building up if you go to this site. And you can see it in the visually in the three dimensions you can see it and you can look when he pulls the the globe away you can see the entire earth and he spins it and you can see where all of the earthquakes are where the lines are and how it relates to the land once you see it you can't not see it you can see how the earth is being broken up for the end times you can see how the prophecy of and I will shift all the isles out of their places and the mountains will be leveled. You can see because it's all where those mountains are, they will be leveled. You can see that he is breaking the earth away. A part of Africa, they're saying, is about to break away. That a great sea is to come to them. There are places in the Middle East, I have watched them, where a field of a, an orchard field, a massive, massive orchard field, dead flat. And in the middle of it, there is a crack, 100 foot wide. Trees this side, trees that side. The farmer here can't get to his orchard over there because the earth just perfectly opened in a massive long crater. God is doing exactly what he said, but the graves will open. And when they open, there will be a great earthquake and the dead in Christ shall rise. He is getting ready. It is, wake up. It's time to be putting on your dresses putting on your bridal garments. It is, yes, it is time. Oh, God bless you. And thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers for one another. I've had messages to say that people have been cured. People have come to Christ. God bless you all. May he make his face shine upon you, give you peace, and may we see each other very, very soon. God be with you all.